welcome. I'm so delighted to be here. I'm the Reverend Alice Silty, and it is my honor and privilege to serve this congregation as minister. I'm known as Rev. Alice, she, her, pastor, minister, anything you want to call me, I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. We've been in and out of our sanctuary over the last few months, and I'm so pleased to be back with you again and delighted to see so many of you and all of us wearing masks. That's wonderful, regardless of whether we're vaccinated or not. We are doing our part to help keep everyone as safe as possible. Our young people are invited to stay with us today. I understand that um, Tabitha will be in the nursery for real small children. Uh, I think parents of really tiny children probably appreciate having only really tiny children in the nursery, and we're hoping that this service today will be something that everybody will enjoy. So welcome to this wonderful community that welcomes all people, all souls, uh, and most of us come from somewhere along the Alabama Gulf Coast and the Florida Panhandle, and those who watch us online can be anywhere these days through the miracle of such wonderful technology. We will light our chalice this morning after a little bit of music for centering. Our chalice lighting this morning is for the memory that heals and holds by Reverend Scott Taylor. We light this chalice in honor of the history that holds and heals us, for the stories of heroism that inspire our own, for the faces of loved ones who have passed, in whose images we see our better selves, for the reminders of those who paved the path on which we travel, and blessed us with the advantages we did not earn on our own. These memories do not live in the past. They carve the contours of the present. They throw themselves into our futures and lures us into building a life better for all. They are here today. Look, listen, let them in. May their light guide our way. Our opening words are from Karen Johnson. As we gather this morning, let us be a people of not forgetting. Let us practice holding collective memories that might otherwise slip into that enormous void. That enormous void that sucks at and corrodes any future that we hold dear. Let us practice honoring truth-telling up from the past that must come fully into the now, lest we falter and fail, lest the whole remain in pieces. Let not our need for comfort be simplicity, be easy forgiveness or false pardon. Smother the heartbreak that still needs healing. And let us practice resilience and reckoning. Let us marry memory and promise. Let us dance in the tension we find there. Let us rest in the integrity we cultivate there. Let us be partners with the possibility that emerges there. It is good that we gather. 
Please rise as your body or spirit allow and join in the words of our church covenant. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Thank you. Um, probably you saw me fooling with this balloon earlier. So I really love balloons. How many of you love balloons? Yeah, they make events so festive and fun. And um, the problem with these balloons is that sometimes they can make you cry because sometimes they can fly away and we lose them. Has that ever happened to anyone? Yeah. And um, you can kind of hang on sometimes with the ribbon. Sometimes people are like that also. Sometimes the people in my life leave me and make me sad, make me cry. Sometimes they slip away because they move far from me. Sometimes they die. Whatever reason makes me sad. But you know, if you have a special ribbon, you can hang on to your balloon. And you can pull it back close and remember the vision. We can do that with people too. We can have a ribbon that connects us through our memories with the people that we love. And so I invite all of you today to be thinking about that ribbon, that special ribbon that helps you keep in touch and keep the people that you love close to you. Now I think this is not gonna flow too far away because the ribbon is getting strong and heavy. In this community of memory and hope, we seek to make real the dreams and the wishes that are the very best part of us. And to that end, we contribute to the wealth and the health of this church through not only our giving of ourselves, but our financial contributions. And it is in the spirit of generosity that we do that this morning in a service of the mission and the vision of this church. So our offering for this morning will now be given and received. I have some joys and sorrows that were given to me earlier if um, there's paper, right? And if there are any out there that haven't been sent up, please raise your hand and Laura will collect them. And if Paula will come and help me with lighting these candles, that would be tremendous.
<laughs> Thank you, Paula. You didn't know you were called into service for the entire time. <laughs> I'm available. Thank you. Thank you. In this wonderful community, we share those joys and sorrows that benefit from that enriching our community and our knowledge of one another. Right here, I have one from Jack and Kate Wolverton. They celebrated their 34th meet anniversary <laughs> yesterday. All right. And wait, I'm not to the best part yet. They said that they met at a Grateful Dead concert in Oakland in 1987. <laughs> An auspicious beginning. <laughs> and um, we'll light a candle for Monty Moncastle, who is at the Life Care Rehab Center on Olive Road, doing well, age 96. And for Sarah Stubbs, she would like us to light a candle for her father and her stepmother. And for all of those joys and sorrows that remain in our hearts, yet unspoken, at this time we light one last candle. Thank you, Paula. I need me for anything else. Announcements later. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Sunday after All Saints Day, All Souls Day, All Hallows Eve or Halloween and Samhain, which Nancy Hagman talked about last Sunday. 
All Souls Day is a day of prayer, of remembrance, and intercession for the dead. Historically, on All Souls Day, Catholics prayed, and still do, for the souls of their departed loved ones who waited in purgatory for their final release into eternal paradise. All Saints Day honors those who have already been found worthy of heaven's reward. Sometimes people are surprised to hear that all Unitarian that there are Unitarian Universalist churches called All Souls, like All Souls UU Church in New York City, All Souls UU Church in Tulsa, All Souls in Washington, D.C. It's actually a very common name, the most common next to first, as in, <laughs> as in First Unitarian Universalist Church of Nashville or First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Diego. I'm pretty sure that we have no UU churches named All Saints. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All Hallows Eve or Halloween is the day before All Souls Day and is considered the day when the border between the, that world and the other world, or this world and the other world, is thin enough for the spirits to pass through, and I think you heard a little more about that last week. So while All Souls Day is the main day for prayers of intercession, from November 1 through 8 is also typical, and now they have extended through the entire month of November due to COVID um, the ability to pray for one's dearly beloved the departed and hope for them a better afterlife than purgatory. The prayers for the souls in purgatory were believed to hasten the transition and when accompanied by an offering of money, that worked even better. <laughs> When in the box the money rings, the soul from purgatory springs. <laughs> Supposedly, these are the words of Johann Tetzel, a Dominican monk from the 16th century who is known for quite a bit of success in soul brokering. <laughs> it doesn't seem likely that a frivolous ditty like that, though, would have contributed to his success as, at something as serious as collecting indulgences to save souls. More likely, these are the words of the followers of Martin Luther, who led the protest against the widespread abuse of, in, of the indulgence system, a movement that resulted in the formation of the Protestant Church. Today, throughout the world, in different religious observances and cultures, there are numerous ways that people honor the memory of those who precede them in death. In Mexico, the festive celebration of the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, includes altars displaying skulls made of sugar, a paradoxical pairing of ingredients. One of the popular souvenirs from Mexico is a little wooden box that's open in front and at the top so that it looks like a stage, I'm sure you've seen them, with little figures of skeletons doing very alive things, like skeleton couples getting married, or mariachi skeletons making music. The view of death from a lighter side is part of the lure of Halloween. Injecting humor can actually help us think more deeply sometimes about things we would rather not think about at all. Humor is an antidote to anxiety, to fear, and a lot of hard emotions. It helps us regulate anxiety, and so play or playfulness can be considered an essential part of spirituality. Probably the reason people are surprised to hear of UU Church is named All Souls is because of the historical significance of All Souls Day and our skeptical nature regarding the value of intercessory prayer or the existence of souls that live past the life of the body. 
The first church in this country to go by the name All Souls is the one in New York City, where I heard Forest Church, Reverend Forest Church, I guess Dr. Reverend Forest Church, preach not long before he died. Forest Church is the Unitarian Universalist minister who has written a number of books, including the one you might be familiar with, Our Chosen Faith. It's an introduction to Unitarian Universalism. Henry Whitney Bellows, who served as minister there for 43 years, named it that in 1855. It was the third name of that church, according to Forest Church. Bellows was not thinking of dead souls, but of living souls. And the name was most likely inspired by a line from a work by William Ellery Channing, who visited New York in 1819 and led to the foundation of that congregation, the founding of it. I am a living member of the great family of all souls, Ellery Channing proclaimed, as am I, as are you. The larger source reads, I am a living member of the great family of all souls, and I cannot improve or suffer myself without diffusing good or evil around me through an ever-enlarging sphere. I take this to mean that Channing recognizes or recognized the connection we have to one another and to all who have come before us as well. While it's not uncommon for you used to be vocal about our struggle with concepts of heaven and hell, prayer and afterlife, we still come to church. We still embrace religion, albeit liberal religion, from the pagan celebrations that honored and recognized the oncoming season of death through the evolution of thought in Christianity as well as other world religions regarding ways to honor and remember the dead. There lies the heart of the religious impulse. In the words of Reverend Forrest Church, religion is the human response to the dual reality of being alive and having to die. We are not the animal with advanced, like, advanced language or tools as much as we are the religious animal. Knowing that we must die, we question what life means. The answers we arrive at may not be religious answers, but the questions that death forces us to ask are at the heart religious questions. And we desire to live in such a way that our lives will prove worth dying for. Quote from Love and Death. All Souls Day, All Saints Day, Samhain, and All Hallows Eve are observances that bring us closer to our own understanding of death as part of the continuum of life a visceral experience of this long history of seeking to understand beginnings and endings happened for me the first time I was inside the Pantheon in Rome, a pagan temple that was Christianized in 609 AD by Pope Boniface IV. Inside of that dome, with only the light coming from the circle cut out at the top of the building, I could feel the centuries of human struggle to make meaning of the power of nature, of life, of death, of fear and hope, of loneliness and suffering, of conflict, of change. I was standing in the stream of thousands of years of religious history, belief, and transformation. I thought about all the ways that people from primitive to highly civilized times have worshiped, prayed, asked for forgiveness and deliverance within those very walls. And what do you, you use have to say to this struggle? We acknowledge what humans have acknowledged as far back as we have memory. We need one another. We are all one family, the great family of all souls. My thoughts are that as long as people are remembered, they are living in our hearts and in our souls. 
in the uh, tradition of Dia de los Muertos, as long as they are remembered, they are not dead. So today we've come to honor those who we've lost and to remember them and to think about the ribbon that holds us and holds them in our hearts. I'm going to light three candles here for members of our church who we've lost in the last couple of years. We haven't been able to do the kinds of ceremonies that we would like to do, but today I'm gonna to light candles for Carol Trotter, who I know was a shock when we lost Carol to COVID, and Elaine Buker, and Billy Cutchin. There may be other ceremonies for a couple of those people later, but for reasons beyond our control, like COVID and family, there haven't been memorial services for all of those people, but we remember them in our hearts today, and we hold them dear. So today I'm inviting you to come and light a candle in a minute for someone whose memory you would like to hold close. And because we're not sharing a microphone and doing a, a lot of talking, I have asked people to send me names and it's always possible that there will be, there are other names that you can let me know. The names that some of these candles will be lit for today are from Heather Stefanescu for her grandpa Vincent, who died in 2005. His birthday was November 19th, and he was honestly one of my favorite people, she said. My grandma Amy, another favorite person, had a 95th birthday on the 4th, and Uncle Ira, who suddenly passed away a couple of months ago. I'm just going to let everybody light the candles in a minute, this way we can hear. And from um, Laura Wood, for John Wood and Michael DeMarco, candles will be lit. From Tara, Toy Shoot, Nettie Laverne Hoover Shoot, Larry Shoot, Don Shoot, Edmund Joseph Jane, Francis Esther Frederick de St. Firol, Edith Claire Jane Seaman, Harold Mary and Seaman, Daniel Evan Weiner, and Misun Kala Brad Houston. Chris Brockway sent me names. Um, her mo mother Sue and grandmother Ramona, is that right? And Denise sent me her mother's name, Wilma Gunn. And is there anybody else out there whose name you sent me and I don't have it? Yes. Charlotte's son, Brian Whitworth. Anyone else? 
And then we also, right before the service started, I was handed ashes for Jean Boulevard. And so after the service, after the service, we'll go outside and, and scatter these in our memorial garden. There's also a new plaque in the memorial garden for Carol Trotter. There's also plaques for Elaine Buker and Billy Cutchins. Thank you. And Scott would like a candle lit for his father, William Satterwhite. While we play some music, I invite you to come forward and light candles for those people that I've just named and for those who may remain unnamed. And I've lit, I have two places so that we can not get, we don't have to crowd up really close to each other. Um, and, you know, I think one candle for the long list you might have, okay? Because <laughs> I'm not sure I have enough candles for 10 names each, but I do know that we carry in our hearts a lot of people and there's a lot of strings and ribbons tying us to these memories of these people so while we hear a little music please come forward and honor those people with candle lighting
These words are also from the Reverend Scott Taylor. Let us drink from the stories that sustain us all. We gather as a house of stories, as a shelter shot through with memories that speak, that long for us to listen, without which we easily lose our way. As we learn of those who have gone before, the way in front of us becomes more clear. As we attune ourselves to the many shoulders on which we stand, purpose, not want and winning, asserts itself as the logic of our lives. As we remember what they survived and how they sacrificed for the faceless us who would come after, we find a courage far beyond what we could muster on our own. Beneath this seemingly dry dirt and seemingly lonely roads, there are wells from which we can drink. Come, let our thirst guide us there. Come, let those sweet ghosts whisper their gifts. Come, let us drink from the web of memories that sustain us. And now our candles are lit. And one of my favorite songs from Rick Maston that reminds me of all of this amazing life and what a dance it is, is Let It Be a Dance that Laura will now sing for us. To 35,417 people in our community thanks to generous donors like you. So thank you 
to the UU Church for helping to make this possible. The second announcement is about us. You know how hot it gets here? And you also know that sometimes when we gather to worship, it's hot and steady and stinky. And sometimes it's cold and we're shivering in the church together. Help us to continue to gather and worship in comfort by contributing to a replacement for our HVAC unit. We have tapped every savings account. We have searched under every couch cushion and we have come up with $7,939 of the $8,984 that we need in order to replace the non-functioning unit. We need $1,045 to cover the difference and to get us there, we're passing the hat. Over the next couple of weeks, please consider contributing to the HVAC fund you can write a check to the church and indicate HVAC in the memo line. You can put a few dollars in the offering basket using an envelope that's marked HVAC so we know it's not just part of the offering. And we can give to 850-988-8827 and select HVAC from the fund menu. Your contribution is tax deductible Please contact, contact Aaron Renfro, treasurer, if you have any questions. Many thanks from the board, the building and grounds ministry team, and the people sitting beside you next summer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. and. Um, when, when we go outside after the service, just whoever wants to join, you know, if you want to come out there and I'll sprinkle the ashes. It's just a few um, from Jean that uh, Hannah Laura has been the holder of for some time. And when she heard we were going to do this service of memory, she asked if we could put them out there in the garden. She had been asked to do that at some point, And Hannah Laura is not able to be with us yet, but we're hoping that she's well enough to recovered from her surgery enough to be back. And notice the plaques on the memory uh, name, name plates in the new one for Carol. And if you ever want to honor somebody in your family with a name plate on our plaque there, um, check with Lori Winterberg about how to do that. But, but it's a lovely way to make somebody's memory last and, and be in a place of love. These words in closing also from Scott Taylor from Soul Matters. May we remember that we never walk out into the world alone. We stand on the shoulders of brave and generous ones who have gone before. We walk beside companions ready to catch us when we fall we hold memories of dear ones in our hearts who keep us connected to our center. May we make this our most important work to remember that who we are does not end at the edges of our own skin. Let us go in peace. Thank you so very much for being here today. It was such a joy to see you.